Let's start with a pretty straightforward proof, and this one is just going to be four lines, so get to it. Here's my first line, and notice that I put in the tick marks on the drawing as I start, or as I write them down here. If you work on your drawing, remember I make you draw those pictures. You have to draw them because you're working off that diagram. I'm going to put in my second set of givens. Make that line too, and notice the tick marks there. And it's really coming in, um, into focus here. I've got two pairs of corresponding signs that are congruent. If I only had a third, and I do, because this side, each of the two triangles uses this side, so we're going to use that good old reflexive property. Now I can visualize what's happening here. These are the two triangles that are congruent. Make sure you've got them in the right order, the vertices that is because when I visualize this figure, this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at this triangle, and it rotates over like this, like that, okay? So you're looking at this triangle congruent to this triangle. So the J on this triangle swings over to the G here. All right, the K, of course, moves over to the H, and the G of this triangle rotates over to the J there. So get those vertices in the correct order. And one final thing I want to mention, you, the author of this book made this look like a rectangle. Don't ever assume things like that because it's actually not a rectangle at all. It is in fact a parallelogram, but um, we'll get into that in our future sections. So this drawing, as we see it right here, is exactly the same. Don't make any false assumption. No one say anything about 90 degrees. All we got, all we can use is the given tick marks. Well, let's step up the complexity just a wee bit with this proof. And right now, I'm, well, I'm going to uh, write down all three of my givens on one line, just cutting down a number of lines. That's up to you. And I've color coded these just so we could stand out and make more sense of them. And right now, I'm looking at my overlapping figures. This is what I'm looking for. I'm trying to visualize this triangle overlapping with this one, this one, and this one. All right, so let's look at, let's see what else we can do to put these two triangles together. I have this piece already, but notice the, neither the green nor the orange in of themselves are a component of the triangle. We would have to add them. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use the addition theorem to say that one orange and one green is equal to one orange and one green. If congruent segments are added to congruent segments, then the sums are congruent. So now we've got two sides of these triangles. Remember, these are my two triangles, this one and this one. I just need the third side, and that would be this side right here our good new friend, the reflexive property. Both triangles use the sign WV or VW as a, well, as a component. So right now we've got enough to say the two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. And some of you have noticed the numbers one, two, and three. That's because on each of these lines, that's where I came up with the side, the side, and the side. On line one, I came up with WX congruent to VZ on line two and line three, each of the conditions for to meet the side, side, side. This will come in handy in more complex proofs. And um, if I will, one more thing about the diagram. And don't say anything about right angles. Again, the diagram looks like that. This is the same diagram. So the orange and the green are not the same. Don't make any assumptions. And there you go. This proof is done. Now we're really getting the hang of these, so let's just get to work on this one. We're going to list all the givens, all three of the givens, and I'm putting in the tick marks, well, at least for two of them. I've got AB congruent to CD, and I've got AE congruent to CE. And, um, well, I know something about the definition. We're going to need the definition of a midpoint, and we know that a midpoint divides a segment into two congruent segments. Very good. And we can see the figures right now. I mean, I'm looking at those two triangles, and it's clearly going to be reflection there. 
And if, do I have enough there? I've got one, two, three pairs of matching sides. I'm good to go. So I've got uh, two pairs of congruent triangles. Make sure the vertices are lined up correctly. EAB is aligned with ECD. Checks out okay. And again, don't say anything about right angles. The drawing looks that way, but remember, this is the same drawing, just like this. So you don't know anything about those angles. All you know is information about the sides. Those are your two congruent triangles. Well, here's the last in my series of four proofs for side, side, side. And I'm looking for these two triangles right here. Again, you can see the overlapping triangles. And we'll have a couple theorems to throw in there. So let's go back to these, the given drawing. And I'm going to write down my given statements with a whole bunch of tick marks in there. So we see I've got the green segments congruent, the orange and the blue. And I know I'm going to have to throw in some segment addition there. I know if I add a blue and an orange, it's the same as adding another blue and orange segment. So that's going to give me EN is congruent to GM. And then you'll notice here, slightly different here, I'm going to go to line three. It's also a segment addition, but it's a little different because this green segment added to MN is the same as this green segment congruent added to the same segment. So if A segment, that is MN, is added to congruent segments, the sums are congruent. A little picky point there, but you know we're picky in class. So you've got the addition theorem used twice, and you've got a bunch of tick marks everywhere. It looks like we are good to go. We've got side, side, side. And again, let's just check D, E, N congruent to H, G, M. It checks out okay. Let's put our figure back on there. Oh yeah, that looks good. We're done.